Hi, Hanka. How are you? Uh, hello. I'm good, thanks. I just woke up from a nap. <laughs> okay. And do you know that today's show is sold out? No, is it? Yeah, really. Wow. But it happens all the time, right? Okay, no, not for us. <laughs> maybe maybe for you guys, but not for us. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Okay. You are probably the, the, the first metal band who has a sold out in our country. Nice. Yeah. And uh, uh, how many people do usually come to shows in Finland? In Finland, if you would play a show, uh, the last club show we played was in Helsinki. I think it was uh, 1800. It, it was also sold out. Yeah. But it was the last show of the whole tour, so it was kind of like special. But yeah, in Finland we get the most people to mm -hmm. to the club shows. Yeah. And as far as I know, you speak many languages and even some Russian. No, no but sure. Wikipedia says. Yeah, yes. I, know. <laughs> I have to go and change it because it's never been true. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I thought you can I sing wish, some song in I Russian. I wish I could, no, but I can't. Okay. And do you know any Russian metal bands or Belarusian metal bands? Belarusian, no. Russian, I don't think so. Arkun? No. No, no I don't know. <laughs> no. Okay. Arkun. Arkun, they're Arcona. really famous. Russian. Playing big festivals. Okay, I have to check it out. I don't know that. <laughs> okay. okay, no Sorry. problem. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and which languages can you speak, actually? It depends what speaking, but I can have a conversation with English and Finnish and Swedish and French and then a little bit less of a conversation in German and Spanish. And then I can get by with Portugal, Portuguese. And, mm. and does it really help you while you're touring? Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. Because usually uh, anywhere you, you go, you can, you can speak something, but then you go to these places like... Russia or Belarus or Ukraine, and then you're like, oh, I don't know, nothing. <laughs> so it's kind of like, but yeah, most of the time, yes, it helps, but not everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you may say, привет, <laughs> that's in Russian, hello. Okay, привет. Привет, <laughs> yeah. I remember the story when uh, all these terrorist attacks happened in Paris, and a lot of bands just decided to go home, like Lamb of God, for, for example, and despite everything, despite the danger, you just decided to go on and aren't you afraid? Yeah, we was afraid and um, I think everybody was afraid in Europe at the time, especially in the big cities. And it was really, it was really hard, you know, because we had played the same club like one week ago and <clears throat> so it kind of like felt very personal in a way because you, c you could imagine how the, you know, how to get out of the backstage if something happens. And, and so on. So it was really hard, but we didn't really think about canceling. But then when Lamb of God canceled, mm -hmm. so then we had to think about because because we were booked together as a package. So then then it was really difficult for us to continue mm -hmm. without them. So then we just we just did a lot of work, and our management and our a, a booking agent and our tour manager did a lot of work to reschedule some shows because some promoters just canceled all our shows because Lamb of God went home and. So, uh, but we thought that we we have to keep on going. I think that uh, we thought everybody we, we were we, everybody was the same. We had the same feeling that we have to keep on doing it. It's the right thing to do right at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like a very easy thing because we knew that that's that's what we have to do. Yeah. We we just can't go home. We need to keep on playing, and uh, we, we we shouldn't be affected by that <coughs> by that incident and. And we're really glad we did it because then we got to play these new places that were booked like in you know two days advance. Mm -hmm. We went to these small Croatian villages and stuff like this, and people were so happy we came. And for some reason, well, of course, for obvious reasons, the the shows after the after the terrorist attacks were much more special for us and also maybe for the fans who came because because yeah because the feeling was very it was kind of like a unity and. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very special time, yeah. And uh, <coughs> you're touring many countries, European countries, and can you say uh, the spirits uh, somehow changed because of this danger? Mm, yeah, like I said, like mm -hmm. just after that, it was, it was a big change in the spirits. And also maybe, maybe because of, 
Well, I think it was just because the, the spirits were really high when 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 the shows kept on going and and people people got to see them despite all the all the bullshit that was happening outside and mm-hmm. and uh, maybe until maybe until now it's still the same. It's not as it's not as emotional anymore, but but still, mm-hmm. I think everything related to that is a little bit more emotional now. Yeah, and uh, as far as I know, you've been studying uh, political history, right? And uh, What would you do if you became a president of Finland? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would have to stop playing music. That would that would be pretty boring. Um, the president of Finland doesn't really have much much power anymore, so I would have to prepare a lot of speeches and you know <laughs> go go to these ceremonies and you know be the be the spiritual leader of not spiritual be the. Um, Kind of like the I- ideological leader of of <laughs> of the nation. So, so I don't know. Yeah, I think the biggest change would be that, that I have to stop stop this band. <laughs> Or okay. I don't know. Or maybe I could maybe I could do both. Would be okay, and if you <laughs> became a leader of some influential country like USA, for example. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't know. That's that's too much. It's there's so difficult questions at the moment. <laughs> Uh, in 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 world politics going on, so I I don't know, but I would I would probably do a lot of things different than than the the president they have now, but mm-hmm. but I don't know. And do you follow the political news and what's going on in the world and so on? Yeah, quite a lot. Yeah. And metal news? Well, not not I don't follow any certain metal sites or anything, but of course because I'm in the in the business, I I get I get a lot of. I guess I guess I get naturally a lot of a lot of info about the scene. So, do you have any rules uh, concerning the girls in the bus? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we have anyway. We have a rule that the bus is our home, so you shouldn't invite any strangers, at least not for a long time, and at least not for traveling. That's that's one thing, of course, because it's our home, so you have to keep the privacy. And uh, but of course, you know, back in the day, we had a lot of parties there, so it, it was. A little bit wild. Nowadays, it's a little bit more, <laughs> <laughs> more easy going. So, so yeah, we have a lot of rules that there are certain areas where the where the guests can be, and there are certain areas that is totally private for us because we have our own, you know, all the stuff there, and blah blah blah. So, and does it happen sometimes that fans irritate you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, no, not really. I mean, yeah, but. <laughs> It's more like, the, like for example, if you are if you are on long tour and you've been sick or something, and then mm-hmm. you have a 39 degree fever, and then you get up from your bed and you have to walk through the to the yard to the venue to to play, and then then some people want to you know do something with you, you know, take photos or mm-hmm. sign m- massive amount of of something. Then then of course it fe- feels irritating, but of course it's not it's mm-hmm. not their fault because they don't know that. I'm sick at the moment, but I thought those are the worst case scenarios. <laughs> but no, but that are not, not usually fan, fans are almost all the time very, very polite and very, very considerate. Mm-hmm. And um, if you could just turn back the time and meet yourselves, yourself um, as you were 20 years ago when you just started the band, what kind of advice would you give to yourself? <laughs> mm, um, I don't know. I think <laughs> I have to just yeah, just just enjoy it as 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 the fullest. Don't don't take it as a grant. Maybe maybe at some point we we were so young because everything started working well for us. We at the, at the moment we maybe took everything for granted for a little bit. So I think I think uh, that's the only thing that I actually regret that we should have been enjoying it to the fullest hundred percent all the time. So that, that's that's the one that I would say. Would you say don't drink this shit? Yeah. <laughs> any, any kind of shit. <laughs> uh, you can drink anything, but uh, be moderate with it. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't let it affect your playing in or your interaction with the crowd. In one of the interviews, Alex said he's not drinking while being on tour anymore. And what about the other guys? Uh, some guys drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Alex doesn't really drink at all, and uh, I drink not, not almost not at all. But then there's this the guy who plays keyboards. He drinks a little bit. 
but it's boring. Yes, maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And do you have any kind of uh, guilty pleasure? Mm. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I use um, always when I'm having beers. I use the Swedish snooze tobacco. Mm -hmm. tobacco. <laughs> and listening to Banana Rama, right? Well, I don't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> and why <laughs> did you decide to do the cover? <laughs> um, actually, I don't know. I, we have we had a, we were always struggling to find songs for covering, and uh, then they just popped but up. Banana popped up. Rama. <laughs> I don't know. And can you name your mm, top five of releases for this year so far? This year? Mm -hmm. 2017. <laughs> what I've been... Uh, I'm not sure what, what's have been released this year, but uh, what I've been buying lately is... is the latest Meshuga, but was it last year? Mm, last year. Was it last year? Yes. Anyway, <laughs> that one. <laughs> and then in Catatonia, The Fall of the Kings. Was it also last year? Mm, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that one. And then uh, then the, the Havoc new album, mm -hmm. Conforming Side. And then nothing comes to my head at the moment mm. yeah and everyone knows uh, that music industry is somehow in the decline in the moment but nevertheless judging by the um, places and the charts your latest album just managed to hit it's not that really bad for you mm. yeah i mean it's changing for everybody and it's changing for us too and we just have to see it differently and and um, just get on with it. <laughs> but um, do you think the future is too is really really dark for the industry? <laughs> no, no, yeah. I think it's bright, but uh, just it's just changing. You mm -hmm. just have to be you just have to be aware, and you have to be adaptive, and you have to be smart, and you have to work a lot. Yeah. I think it's very bright. So, just some words for the fans. They will hear it probably after the concert, but nevertheless. Yes, it's the first time for us in Belarus, mm -hmm. first time for in Minsk, and I just heard that it's sold out, which is amazing. And uh, I mean, it really is amazing. We don't really sell out places that often, and uh, it's a shame that uh, we didn't have any time. I didn't have any time to go out and see the city uh, because it's been a rough day and it's going to be a rough morning. It's cemetery. Well, not cemetery, but there's the city, <laughs> yes. about twelve minutes away, I guess. Yes. <laughs> But uh, next time, so I hope that we could come soon back to Minsk and then I would have my tourist time as well. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope for the best. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.